Hi lovelies, I'm Naomi from Jealous of the Birds and welcome to episode 6 of Jealous of the Bops. In this episode we're going to focus on Carole King's 1971 album Tapestry and Kat Parr's 2012 album Sun. As always, I have my coffee. Let's get stuck in. Carole King's album Tapestry is such a cohesive album and really demonstrates her very candid lyricism and very musically complex songwriting. It won a bunch of Grammys in 1972, including Album of the Year and Song of the Year. And it also had uh, a bunch of the greatest musicians. In fact, James Taylor and Joni Mitchell both featured on the record, with Joni Mitchell providing some of the backing vocals and James Taylor doing vocals and some guitar in places as well. James Taylor was actually one of Carol's friends who really encouraged her to perform and record her own material. It was very common at the time to be recording cover albums and a lot of the classic records that were uh, prominent in the decades before. In terms of the record's critical reception, it had a lot of positive reviews. Um, it stayed at number one in the Billboard 200 for 15 consecutive weeks. Um, and a lot of her songs were actually popularized by other artists. Um, for example, Aretha Franklin's cover of You Make Me Feel Like a Natural Woman, The Shirelles covered Will You Still Love Me Tomorrow, and James Taylor even did You've Got a Friend. That, in a lot of ways, feels like a testament to the fact that Carole King's songwriting is so relatable and a bunch of other artists were so eager to record their own versions of her songs. So the first song by Carole King that I want to focus on is called It's Too Late and it was part of the second batch of singles that was released in April of 1971. Lyrically, it's really a very tender admission um, of how a relationship that the speaker has with their partner has deteriorated, and the longer they spend time together, the more evident it becomes that they're both unhappy. The song's directed towards the lover and is delivered from a very compassionate place. Unlike so many other breakup songs, It's Too Late holds a certain maturity um, with no trace of resentment or bitterness towards the other person. But instead, it really shows a certain level of understanding that sometimes this is just how these things go and people drift apart. Um, but there's something to be said for breaking things off in a very mature and loving kind of way. Musically, the song has a very easy listening feel. Um, it even has some percussive elements like conga drums and shakers. You've got King's uh, signature piano work, a very groovy bass line, um, and lots of lush vocal harmonies. So really, as a listener, you just find yourself bopping along to the vibes and really sinking into it, even though it's dealing with kind of melancholic themes, but in a, a very hopeful, um, grounded kind of way. So here is It's Too Lit by Carol King. It used to be so easy living here with you. You were light and breezy and I knew just what to do. Now you look so unhappy and I feel like a fool. And it's too late, baby, now it's too late. Though we really did try to make it. So Shan Marshall, a.k.a. Kat Parr, recorded the album Sun between 2007 and 2012 uh, after many starts and stops. Around 2006, Marshall went bankrupt after being unable to fulfill certain touring commitments after she was hospitalized. And so she financed this entire Sun record herself, um, basically using her retirement fund. In interviews, she's kind of expressed... Um, feelings of self-doubt and uncertainty during the making of this record because she was very much deliberately straying away from 
having piano or guitar be the main instrumental focus of this record and instead she's opting for lots of electronic elements like drum machines, synths, vocoders, um, really skeletal song arrangements, unlike a lot of what she'd done before. Due to the kind of stop and start nature of the recording process for Sun, her record label um, suggested that they bring in a producer to help Shan with the record, and she outright refused. In fact, she stated that telling a musician uh, that they need a producer is like telling someone they need a nose job. And so ultimately, Sun was produced entirely by Shan Marshall. The first song by Kat Parr that I want to share with you is called Human Being, and in many ways it kind of feels like a humanist anthem, with that uh, mantra repeating that you're a human being and you've got a right. Essentially, it encourages us to kind of take hold of our humanity and really live our individual lives according to our own intuition. I feel like the song really acknowledges um, the ways in which we're unique and we each have something to contribute to society, to our own lives and the lives of people we love. Um, if we only had the confidence to really take some risks and make a move. The song's a pretty perfect example of the sonic textures of this album, especially with that very buzzy drone uh, stringed instrument that repeats throughout the verses. Despite there not being a lot of guitar or other stringed instruments on this record, when they do appear, um, it does have this kind of world music feel to it that really contrasts and complements the more electronic contemporary elements of the songs. Let's hear it. This is Human Being by Kat Parr. So the second track by Carol King that I want to share with you was another of its singles. It's called I Feel the Earth Move. Honestly, it's probably one of her most well-known songs from her back catalogue and really catapults you into the passion and rhythm of this record. One of the most invigorating things about this song that's also indicative of Carol King's songwriting in general is the way that she can take personal experiences and transform them into something universal take those experiences and kind of blast them out into massive concepts. It really allows the listener to take some sort of ownership of the meaning behind the song and in that way elevate them to almost an anthemic status. So all the passion and excitement and power of being in love is encapsulated in this song and in that respect it really is relatable even to this day despite the fact that it was recorded almost 50 years ago. So here is I Feel the Earth Move by Carol King.
song by Cat Power that I want to share with you is called Manhattan. And in a lot of ways, it kind of feels like a soundtrack for Manhattan for me. Cat Power is insanely bold when it comes to allowing each component of the song space to breathe so that it's not just the chords and the notes and the beats um, that's important, but also the suspense between all of those things. In a lot of ways, it kind of feels like an edgy elegy to the city of Manhattan uh, in the sense that there's that refrain that keeps repeating, you can never be Manhattan. And so it seems like whatever Manhattan is or represents or the kind of person that you have to be in order to survive and thrive in a city like Manhattan is completely antagonistic to the person that the speaker is referencing. Part of why I love this song so much is that it really takes you on a pretty meditative journey. Um, it's the kind of song where you just have to sink into it. You've got those really spacey, reverby piano chords that just plunk through the song, and it kind of washes over you in this really surreal way. Here it is, Manhattan by Cat Parr. You'll never be known 